yeah, so that happened. It's probably one of the most difficult feats ever achieved in rocket history. However, it only gets harder from here. Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. Almost a year ago, I did a video on how long the voice SpaceX still had to go. I was especially skeptical of their ability to catch the ship out of midair. In light of what they just did, have I changed my mind? Let me explain. Even for the most die-hard Elon haters out there, it's hard to deny what SpaceX accomplished on the 13th of October 2024 was a historical event. In the last video we did on this subject, I barely mentioned catching the booster. There's a good reason for that. It's the thing I thought they were most likely going to be able to accomplish. Although honestly, I was pretty confident they would at least need a couple of kicks of the can before they succeeded. Catching the booster, in spite of the fact that it is an amazing feat, is much easier and forgiving than the equally important aspect of Elon's plan, which is to catch the Starship. At least without design modifications to the ship. The ship, unlike the booster, doesn't have those two pins popping on either side. Catching the booster is similar to another kind of landing we're already familiar with, and that's landing a jet on an aircraft carrier using a hook and wire. The booster uses two stubby hooks and two rails, but the mechanisms involved are similar. The system the booster is using allows for a bit of air and speed position and rotation. In fact, if you look at the photos and videos of Booster 12 after it was caught, you'll notice it's slightly out of rotation, but the amount it was rotated by was within tolerance. The Starship appears to use a hitch style mechanism to be caught by the tower arms, similar to a truck and trailer hitch, where the catching tower has two pins that act like a truck and ball hitch, and the Starship has two cupped holes that interface with the ball hitches. Anyone who has struggled with trying to line up a trailer hitch can attest to how difficult it can be at some times. And that's just trying to get one hitch, not two at the same time. It's going to take a lot of precision for the tower to get its pins into both of the starship's holes at the same time. Pilots are lucky the aircraft carrier flight arresters don't use such a system. <laughs> the tolerance for such a system is probably going to be much less forgiving than the hook and rail system the booster currently uses. So that little bit of rotation the booster had upon landing would probably result in a missed catch for the Starship. But it could be that SpaceX knew they had the margin and are capable of much more precision than we think. After all, Falcon 9 boosters land with far less precision than Booster 12 did. Although a missed catch of the Starship probably wouldn't be as critical of a failure as a missed booster catch. Elon has stated that if the tower misses the ship, it probably can land on the ground on its skirt. If the booster misses, it will have to try to quickly yeet itself into the ocean, as Elon put it. Another issue is that Starship is going to be coming from an orbital trajectory, coming from the back side of the tower, rather than a suborbital trajectory approaching from the front side of the tower, like the booster did. So when the ship comes in, I think its ballistic trajectory will probably be aiming past the tower into the ocean beyond it, then double back to the tower using its engines. I didn't see from any of the velocity graphs people have made of Starship's re-entry. What? But it didn't look like it did this maneuver in either of the last two flights. And there hasn't been any statement from SpaceX about how it will be performed. Although I think SpaceX has demonstrated that they can maneuver the booster and ship just about any way they want without much of an issue. But they will need to take into account how the metal on the ship will expand during re-entry heating. Which may not be exactly the same each attempt. While it may seem like a small thing, heat expansion on an object the size of a starship can be several inches and will be exacerbated because the starship's skin will be allowed to get much hotter than most spacecraft usually get during re-entry. So the thermal expansions will be even greater. Imagine if you tried to hook up a trailer and all of a sudden the trailer hitch changed position. Do I think all these different factors can be overcome? Yes, I'm now about as sure SpaceX can catch a ship as it was last year that they could catch a booster. So, yeah, I think they're going to have a couple of misses. But don't worry, it'll buff out. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and other topics ranging from theology to science, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon to get extra content and special perks. Link in the description. The more people who support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.